Yo. Huh. Aubrey Edwards, Tony Shivani. We bout to party. We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. This is AEW Unrestricted. We are the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. We're coming to you from San Francisco, and we're coming to you more specifically from the historic Cow Palace, yes. where coming up this Friday, AEW Rampage live, that's live on TNT at 10, 9 central. But we are here talking with Tony Khan about this Sunday, an AEW Revolution pay-per-view. We're so excited about being in the Bay Area, but more excited, so excited about another year of Revolution. How about that? I'm so excited for this pay-per-view. It's great being here in the Bay Area. It's a historic wrestling venue we're in right now, the Cow Palace, and we have a great show tonight on TNT, AEW Rampage, followed by the Countdown to Revolution. And the Countdown to Revolution will have some great videos, great uh, build up for the matches. And I think when you start talking about Revolution, we have to start with one of the most highly anticipated matches, one of the biggest main events in AEW history, a 60 minute Iron Man match for the AEW World Championship, MJF versus the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. This has got to be one of the most anticipated uh, matches we've ever had for so many reasons. And week after week on Dynamite, I think. The, the anticipation has just continued to sure. build. Yeah. And one of the uh, things we anticipate with this match is conditioning. Yes. And my question to you is, do you think MJF is ready for a 60-minute Ironman match against a guy like Brian Danielson? Well, I don't know if anybody's ready for a 60-minute Ironman match against Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson is probably the greatest technical wrestler of our generation, yeah. maybe the greatest technical wrestler of my lifetime. And he's also one of the most popular wrestlers we've seen. He has such an amazing connection with the crowd. I think we saw that right here in the Cow Palace a couple days ago, mm -hmm. leading into Revolution this weekend, as the crowd went nuts, as Brian promised to kick MJF's head in, to say the least, <laughs> over these 60 minutes in this Iron Man match. But we did see MJF has really stepped up his conditioning. He's just continued to come out looking better and better. He's in fantastic shape. Also, in the video we saw building up Revolution right. on Wednesday, you saw MJF out there, the work he's putting in in the gym. He looks better than ever. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of factors to this match, but certainly Brian Danielson's experience in longer matches could be an advantage to him. But for MJF, uh, Brian Danielson's been through a lot of tough matches this year, and MJF's picked his spots. So it's certainly going to be... A fascinating match and I think there's so many factors uh, in this match that make it one of the most anticipated bouts we've ever had absolutely and I mean you mentioned conditioning Brian's conditioning is is probably the best of anyone I've seen he he's an absolute machine he can go probably longer than an hour so this is going to be a very interesting matchup to see if Max can keep up with Brian Brian is on many people's Everest of greatest wrestlers of all time so we, we see Brian having the experience, the conditioning, the just the reps overall. And do we think that Max is going to be able to match it? And I absolutely think he does, even though he hasn't been in this business nearly as long. We've seen the mind he brings to wrestling. We've seen the passion he brings for this and the work he's bringing into it. I think even though there's a very clear advantage on Brian, when you break it down looking at these two opponents, it's a really good matchup. Yeah, it's going to be going to be an awesome, awesome main event. And certainly a uh, 60 minute Iron Man match as a main event of a pay-per-view. It's very unique here in AEW to have something. Uh, we've had some long, great epic matches in the past, but never anything like this where you knew you were going to get two of the best wrestlers of today, two of the best wrestlers of this generation, 60 minute Iron Man match. And really, uh, I think the fans in San Francisco are in for a treat, and I think the fans on pay-per-view are in for a huge treat this Sunday. Uh, needless to say, I don't like to use the word controversial, but MGF has been very outspoken. I know he's been very difficult to deal with as <laughs> far as announcers and referees are concerned. Yeah. And as the owner of the company, he hasn't been able to been that easy to deal with before. But the fact is, he is the world champion. He defeated John Moxley to become the world champion. I guess no one thought he would ever be able to do that. But it was a great win for him. And it was it shows us that 
regardless of all the bravado, the way he talks, he is a great pro wrestler. And I think he's getting better. I, it's hard to say the world champion is getting better, but the world champion is getting better. And you see that each and every time that he's been in the ring. Well, Takeshita was one of uh, the best matches we saw all year in 2023, yes. I yes. thought, on Dynamite. MJF Takeshita tore the house down. Both men very impressive in that match. Also, MJF versus Ricky Starks at Winter is Coming was an excellent yes. first defense of the championship. But I think now for MJF going into this match with Brian Danielson, uh, time, conditioning, all these things will be factors. But one of the biggest factors of all, the mind games, uh, the psychological, we saw MJF trying to get into Brian Danielson's head for weeks. Right. But in recent weeks, it's been Brian Danielson who's uh, been able to say some things that right. got under MJF's skin and also in a physical altercation got the better of MJF, uh, which you don't see very often. Right. And additionally, uh, it was amazing to hear the words Brian Danielson went out on, even though some parts of the country might not have heard them. Uh, <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. Brian Danielson uh, was very vociferous, and uh, he is very determined to win the AEW World Championship. And I cannot wait for that 60-minute Ironman match, MJF versus Brian Danielson. And that is coming up this Sunday on Revolution, on pay-per-view from the Chase Center here in San Francisco. And, uh, yes, uh, the words for Brian Danielson... Uh, even had MJF speechless at the end of the show, which oh boy. I don't think that's ever happened. It's very hard to do. Eyes bugging out of his head. Not much, not much to say. Okay, another world title match for the AEW Women's World Title. It's going to be a three-way match where Jamie Hayter will defend the title against Soraya and Ruby Soho. Tony, got to admit, and I, I know you, you know, I'm close with Britt Baker, and she was a world champion. Ugh. I think Jamie Hayter is one of the best world champions in the women's division that we've ever seen. Well, I think Britt Baker would agree with that. Yes. And I think they are two of the best champions we've had. But right now, Jamie Hayter is one of the best wrestlers on the planet. Yes. And I can't wait to see Jamie Hayter get in the ring. It's an interesting clash of styles and wrestling philosophies. Mm -hmm. I think Jamie Hayter can go in there. She can brawl with anyone. But a great pro wrestler. Right. Ruby Soho also, somebody who can get in there, brawl, and is as good a wrestler as anybody. We saw that in the street fight, but oh, maybe boy. Ruby Soho uh, has a proclivity for this kind of brawling. Sure. Uh, we saw that uh, wild pull apart, whereas Soraya uh, has not been in AEW as long as uh, Ruby Soho, let alone Jamie Hayter, who's right. been here from the very beginning. We've seen Soraya come into AEW with a very high opinion of herself and her friends. And I have to say, Soraya has made no friends in that group of homegrown AEW stars that right. we really built the company around. Jamie Hayter, somebody who worked her way up to the top. And Ruby Soho, I think, has yeah. that in common. She wasn't here from the beginning, but Ruby Soho has been here for a long time and is certainly a very hardworking pro wrestler. Uh, we've seen her caught in the middle of this thing at times. But I think what's really, really interesting is you have uh, three wrestlers, uh, three wrestlers of really different backgrounds, yeah. international yeah. competition, yeah. Uh, but really, uh, despite the different paths they took to get here, week after week, we have seen there is a lot of dislike between these women, in particular between Jamie Hayter and Soraya. Yeah, I it's very obvious. I mean, I mean, we talked about homegrown stars, and I don't know if you call the other what you, how you describe the other ladies. You mentioned you mentioned Ruby Soho. She's been here so long; it almost seems like she's homegrown. Yeah, but 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 she's not. And uh, Soraya, when she came in here, it, it kind of changed the dynamic, didn't it, in the women's division? A bit, it did. Yeah. And I think Soraya coming in certainly changed Tony Storm's attitude. It yeah. seemed yeah. that Tony Storm uh, really. When she arrived in AEW, uh, had everything we were looking for as as uh, you know a fan favorite, right. and but Tony Storm has become quite a villain and has had some great matches still, yeah, yeah. and even though she's been wrestling and not necessarily for the fans, Tony Storm has been as dangerous as ever. We saw Britt Baker get involved in the match this week, and of course Soraya and Jamie Hayter in a pull apart. And then Ruby Soho ended up coming out and getting involved also. Right. Ruby Soho, 
I think does not have the personal issue with either woman. Right. But Ruby Soho wants to be the champion and has been caught in the middle of this thing, but could just find herself coming out of this thing as the AEW Women's World Champion this Sunday. I think that's one of the things that we need to remember with Ruby is that she hasn't had that opportunity to carry a championship for a company. And I know that that's something that she really, really, truly wants. So this is a great opportunity for her. And at the same time, we see her kind of being pulled in the direction of both either the originals and the outsiders, if you will. Jamie having that great brawling style, Soraya having everything she's done for women's wrestling and putting women's wrestling on the map. Ruby, as you mentioned, that street fight. Oh my God. Like Ruby's tenacity and her drive for just wanting to be the champion is is so strongly felt, I think, by everyone. Everyone, not even just the women's division. I think we all see it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, Ruby Soho is a great leader in AEW, a great wrestler. And I think that Jamie Hayter right now is wrestling at the highest level uh, in the women's division and one of the highest levels in all of AEW. Soraya, on the other hand, is so disliked, <laughs> is so toxic in so many ways. And really, we see, I think, Soraya coming in here. Uh, has she gotten into the head of Jamie Hayter? And furthermore, uh, will Ruby Soho get caught in the middle of this and will Ruby Soho be able to take advantage of the personal issue that we've seen between Jamie and Soraya uh, that continued to uh, really, really on Wednesday, mm -hmm. on last Friday on Rampage, week right. after week, we've just seen those two, like you said, Tony, it's very obvious, they don't like each other. And for Ruby Soho, I think it's a great opportunity for her to come in and take advantage of the chaos. Yes, and play off the hate that those two have. Maybe it'll, it'll Smart. work to her advantage. Absolutely. Love the word toxic. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to use it on the next broadcast. Oh, oh hey. <laughs> Talk about Soraya. That's very good. <laughs> okay. We talked about the world title. We talked about the women's world title. We still have many other title matches to talk about and maybe one of the most violent matches you will ever want to see part of Revolution this Sunday when we continue on Unrestricted. Unrestricted. We continue on AEW Unrestricted coming to you from the Cow Palace in San Francisco. And here in San Francisco this week at the Chase Center, it's AEW Revolution exclusively on pay-per-view. And we're talking with our boss, general manager, owner of AEW, and that is Tony Khan. Okay, I mentioned right before the break that we are going to see what possibly could be one of the most violent matches we've ever had in AEW. Oh it's a Texas death match. John Moxley going one-on-one. -on -one against Hangman Adam Page, an issue between these two men that started back in Cincinnati in October. So it's been going on for months. You want to talk about intensity. Oh. Let's take you back to Wednesday. If you saw that interview, or that promo, I should call it, by John Moxley, one of the most intense, one of the most revealing promos that I've ever seen in pro wrestling, and I've seen many of them, and I know what a Texas death match is all about. John Moxley is a violent man, and he is an intense man, but I've never seen him this or heard him talk this intensely before Tony ever. That was one of the most incredible things I've seen in wrestling. That promo from Mox, it was so intense. And you heard what he said. Uh, Hangman may be a great man, but yeah. he basically questioned, is Hangman going to be able to match Mox's level of intensity? And to be honest, we've seen both men in some of the most intense matches in the history of AEW. And that's, I think, why... I'm so excited, and I believe a lot of people are really excited and invested in this because John Moxley and Hangman have had some of the greatest pay-per-view matches, mm -hmm. and uh, they've both been involved in Texas death matches in AEW that were great, right. but never have we seen either of them in as uh, personal and as even match sure. a rivalry is this yeah. because we've seen both men knock each other out. We've seen both men are capable of seriously injuring each other in the context of a pro wrestling match and a pro wrestling match is dangerous enough, but this Texas death match, this is a very dangerous situation. And not only is the Texas death match a dangerous medium for pro wrestling, but these two really want to hurt each other. It is a deep-rooted 
personal hatred that John Moxley and Hangman Page have for each other. And we've seen it time and time again. We've heard it time and time again. And uh, I cannot wait for the Texas death match this Sunday on pay-per-view, Mox versus Hangman. I'm really excited for this in particular because we've seen the history that Hangman and Moxley have both had at Revolution. Like Looking back even to the first one, Moxley won the world title. At the very first Revolution, we saw Hangman involved in one of the greatest tag matches we've ever seen. So to see both of them and to see all the work they've done in AEW and where they've come from and the body of work that they have and being put in this situation with this much emotional uh, background thrown into it and the violence... This is this is just going to boil over. Absolutely. This is one of those matches where I think we're all a little worried because we both love these guys and everything they've done for AEW so much, but there's so much that could come out of this. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to... The vision of John Moxley on the steps talking about the violence and talking about... Yes. He said, if, if you walk down... I wouldn't want to be the person to walk down a dark alley with me. And then that wound is open on his head and the blood is just pouring down. Oh my God. It's a visual that I won't forget. And Tony, as a wrestling fan, I've seen many Texas death match as a fan and I've seen them as a commentator. I know what these type of matches can do. It's, it's literally, you can't get up. You, you beat your opponent down until he can't stand up again. So that's, oh my God. well, and I think, uh, it's a very, very fitting, uh, way for the pay-per-view to hopefully settle this thing between John Moxley and Hangman Page. But frankly, I think it's an issue that will never be settled. These two men hate each other. But one thing we do know is that somebody's going to get put down for the 10 count at Revolution this Sunday. Who's it going to be? John Moxley versus Hangman Page in the Texas death match. But again, to anybody who has not followed this rivalry or wants to get up to speed, Uh, For months and months, these two have been teeing off on each other. It's been building to this moment on Sunday. And I believe uh, John Moxley's promo on Wednesday got a lot of people talking. Certainly Hangman fired right back on him a little bit later in the show. And week after week, we've seen these two trading shots, trading bombs. And I can't wait for Revolution this Sunday in the Texas Deathmatch. It's going to be incredible. John Moxley and Hangman Adam Page in the Texas Death Match. Okay, we got a four way match for the World Tag Team Championship. And on Wednesday, we found out during the Casino Tag Team Royale who the fourth and final team would be. Of course, the guns are the World Tag Team Champions. In the four way, they will be defending against the former champs, the acclaimed, the team of Jeff Jarrett and Jade Lethal. And now, the surprising entry because we went into Wednesday not even realizing these. These two would be in the the Royale. It's Danhausen and Orange Cassidy. Wonderful. Yes. Well, right now, Orange Cassidy is the hottest wrestler yes, in yes. AEW. Yes, 21 yes. straight wins. Wow. The All-Atlantic champion. And what a way to kick off Dynamite. Orange Cassidy versus Big Bill was a great match to start the show. Right. And then we had Orange Cassidy and Danhausen announcing that they were going to be Uh, representing the best friends in this match. And then we had, uh, in this battle royal, certainly a lot of personal issues. And tonight on Rampage, four of the teams who were in this battle royal will be going at it. But on Sunday, talk about uh, uh, what what an interesting situation because the rivalries, the way they've unfolded, you have the acclaimed who have a very personal rivalry with the guns mm-hmm. also a rivalry with jeff jarrett and jay lethal Absolutely. Yes. orange cassidy and the best friends have also had a lot of problems with jeff jarrett and jay lethal but recently it was the guns who took them out uh going into the match of course took out trent and chuck and i think with trent and chuck getting taken out it made this thing personal for orange and Danhausen. and now it's a a number of personal rivalries intersecting in this four-way match yeah at the pay-per-view on Sunday should be a really fun match. It's some of the most popular wrestlers in AEW with the acclaimed and Orange Cassidy and Danhausen against four of the least popular wrestlers in <laughs> AEW, Absolutely. the Guns, Jeff Jarrett, and Jay Lethal. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I have a lot of respect for Jeff Jarrett <laughs> as a pro wrestler, and, and he and Jay Lethal are, are a great tag team. They really, really are. 
Uh, the guns, my goodness, I, I could talk for hours about those two kids. But here's the, here's the fact. Orange Cassidy, you mentioned this, Orange Cassidy had that match against Big Bill. It was very apparent that Orange Cassidy was banged up. Oh, yeah. I mean, his ribs were banged up. And he was still willing to go out there and wrestle again. And, of course, Dan Housen played a big part in them winning that, that battle royal. You're right about Orange Cassidy. I, I think sometimes we look at the way he approaches things. He's nonchalant. He says, oh, yeah, I don't care. We look at that. We, sometimes we ever look of what he can do in the ring. He's amazing in the ring, what he can do. Absolutely. Yeah. Mind-blowing. He's one of the best wrestlers in AEW, and he's been a great All-Atlantic champion. Yeah. He would be a great double champion. And speaking of double champions, it would be so well-received, I think, if yeah. the acclaimed become two-time world champions I'm all for that. at Revolution this yeah. weekend. The acclaimed, very popular world champions. Nobody wanted to see the acclaimed lose the title to the guns. And I think people really want to see the acclaimed become two-time champions. Yes. Uh, like we said, Orange Cassidy, Dan Housen, Max Caster, and Anthony Bowens, the acclaimed. These are four of the most popular names in all of AEW. Mm -hmm. And the people they're facing, the guns, Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal, they have a real personal issue, a real personal rivalry, and the place is going to come unglued for that match. Yeah. I think one of my favorite parts of this match is just the absolute emotion the fans feel for each of these individual teams. You have the acclaimed who have become some of the biggest stars in this company. Like everyone is cheering scissor me daddy ass to their friends it's next amazing. to them. Really oh, it's so amazing, right? And then you have someone like Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal who are just despised. Jeff Jarrett, who's doing some of the best work of his entire career in his age in 2023. But people hate the guy. I don't, I'm not really a fan. Like nice. if we're being like perfectly honest, you have the guns. I remember watching the faces of the fans when the guns won the titles from the acclaimed it was a shocker, in El Paso. It was just so shocking. Yeah. But then you have Dan Housen and Orange Cassidy, two guys who are loved, loved by the AEW fan base. And as Dan Housen did say, there is a little bit of extra room in Orange Cassidy's backpack for another title. This could really go any way, but I really think everyone's going to enjoy themselves when they watch this match just because there is someone for everyone in here. It'll be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great pay-per-view. It'll be a great championship match. And speaking of great championship matches, another great championship match we have to look forward to. I'm very excited for the TNT championship match. Of course, the king of television, Samoa Joe, the TNT champion and the Ring of Honor World Television champion. He's going to be out there defending the TNT championship against his hated rival and former partner, Wardlow. Right. Should be a great match, and I'm also very excited about that. Uh, it's a really, really intense rivalry, and we heard from Wardlow a little bit of background information about this partnership, about what Samoa Joe has done, about what he did to get in Wardlow's head, about uh, learning Wardlow's tendencies, learning uh, Wardlow's past, and using these things against him t to steal his championship. Yeah, and and uh, you know Samoa Joe, when we had the uh, we had the uh, ladder match, the uh, Face of the Revolution ladder match, which was won by uh, Powerhouse Hobbs in his home area, him being from Oakland. So he was on commentary with us, and you could tell that he was very very confident about his strategy going into this match. Samoa Joe is going to face Wardlow, and we're all impressed with Wardlow. But Samoa Joe is like so calm and so cool and so calculating. To me, as much as I love Wardlow, I, Samoa Joe is going to be a very difficult man to beat. Very, very difficult. Yeah, it's a very exciting situation, and again, a rivalry that goes way back. We saw back at Grand Slam, we had Samoa Joe and Wardlow as a team. They had a lot of success as a tag team. They did. They and did. And people thought it was very cool to see the TNT champion out there teaming with the Ring of Honor World Television champion. But we learned it was really all a ploy by Samoa Joe sure. to steal the TNT championship and become the one true king of television. And now this Sunday at Revolution, Wardlow has an opportunity for revenge, and Samoa Joe has a chance to cement his legacy as the true king of television. And as you said, Tony, at the Face of the Revolution ladder match this past Wednesday at Dynamite, ahead of Revolution, we saw Powerhouse Hobbs victorious. Yeah. And, of course, at the end, Samoa Joe and Wardlow getting into it on the stage as Powerhouse Hobbs was looking on, and he said... Time is on his side here. He's right. And Wednesday, Powerhouse Hobbs will be waiting in the wings for the winner of this Wardlow-Samoa Joe match. And I personally 
cannot wait for that. But I do know that Samoa Joe versus Wardlow right now is the kind of rivalry that pay-per-views are all about. We've been waiting for this one-on-one match for so long. Uh, these two and their partnership, it goes way back, and I think it's going to be a great match for the TNT Championship on Sunday. We can't wait till Sunday. It's Revolution coming to you on pay-per-view from the Chase Center here in San Francisco. We'll continue with AEW Unrestricted. Unrestricted. We are back on AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. We're talking with Tony Khan about this weekend's big event, AEW Revolution. But a reminder tonight, it's AEW Rampage. We are going to be live, that's right, live on TNT from right here at the Cow Palace, 10, 9 Central, followed by the Countdown the Revolution. Very special interviews and features, getting you ready for Sunday night's event on pay-per-view from the Chase Center. One of the title matches will be for the AEW World Trios Championship. The Elite will defend against the House of Black. Now, recently, on Rampage Slam Dunk, we saw the House of Black confront the Elite, Tony. And then this past Wednesday, on Dynamite, we saw what happened. They attacked the Elite as they were getting ready to come to the ring, took the title belts from them, later on laid the title belts down, say, we will get those titles at Revolution. The Elite's great team. But Malachi Black and the House of Black, as mysterious they are, they are some of the most powerful, strongest, and lethal men in all of AEW. That will be an incredible, incredible match. Like you said, a few weeks ago at AEW Rampage Slam Dunk, Mm -hmm. we saw them come out to confront the Elite. We'd seen hints uh, previously that this could be coming. And boy, this past week on AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night, the... House of Black definitely laid a beating on the Elite, held up the championships, as you said, and set the stage for what's going to be a great trios championship match uh, this Sunday at Revolution. And as you said, it's a very interesting match. You have the Elite, who are such great technical wrestlers, such great high flyers, can do all facets of pro wrestling, and you have the House of Black, who are really so unconventional and uh, really, I believe, some of the best brawlers in wrestling, but also across the three members of House of Black, they cover three very different styles of pro wrestling and can really encompass uh, all the styles. And I think the elite also can wrestle different kinds of matches. We've seen them in every different kind of fight, whether it be the best pro wrestling or falls count anywhere matches and everything in between so i really believe uh this match could have a little bit of everything but certainly uh for the trios championship you couldn't ask for two better trios in all of aew and really in all of pro wrestling i think uh, the house of black versus the elite should be an awesome awesome match this sunday at revolution intimidation is such a big part of the game for the house of black but i often thought that kenny omega and the young bucks have done so much i don't think they can be intimidated But if anybody can intimidate them, it's the way that the House of Black approached their game. Well, the House of Black, with a jump from behind, I think it showed what they're all about and shows uh, how the House of Black approach a fight. They really are uh, unconventional, as I've said. They're not about following the rules or the authority. And you see the House of Black uh, coming out, upending the elite and holding up the championship belts. But the elite at Revolution have put on some of the best matches in the history of the pay-per-view, have a great record there. So it should be a very, very interesting situation. Certainly two of the most dominant trios in AEW history. Yeah, the the first Revolution, Win Trust Arena 2020, uh, the Young Bucks against Omega and Hangman. Oh, wow. Greatest tag team match I've ever called in my life I've ever seen. Just laid the foundation for what this event has been this being our fourth year of Revolution. Absolutely. Yeah. And some of the biggest stars in AEW have had some of their biggest moments at Revolution, and this could be a great match, and I'm really looking forward to this big trios championship match, the Elite versus the House of Black. Speaking of big stars, Aubrey, there's none bigger than Chris Jericho. Oh, man, we've got Chris Jericho and Ricky Starks at each other's throats again this weekend, but 
Jericho Appreciation Society is banned from ringside. So yeah. this is a fun little wrinkle because we saw Chris and Ricky have an incredible match, the first Dynamite of this year in Seattle. Way to kick off a brand new year. What an incredible match. We've seen Chris Jericho and Ricky Starks at each other's throats for weeks and weeks. We see Ricky Starks is one of the biggest up-and-coming stars in AEW versus Chris Jericho, one of the greatest of all time. We know these two have great chemistry together. We just have seen all of Jericho's little henchmen kind of getting yeah. involved, and I'm really excited to see a clean, let's go, just these two guys going at it. Yeah. Do you really think we're going to see a clean let's go? I mean, Jericho's always got something on his sleeve, right? Yeah, but the Jericho Appreciation Society are banned from ringside. We're not going to let any of them down there. Good. So. I know That's it's good. going to be a great wrestling match, and I'm very excited to see Ricky Starks versus Chris Jericho one-on-one -on -one this Sunday at Revolution. They're both great wrestlers. They're mm -hmm. both great stars. And, again, I think at Revolution we're going to see two of the best going at it. And that's really what this pay-per-view is all about, the best wrestlers in the world going at it. We've set a high standard year in, year out with this Revolution pay-per-view, sure. and I expect we'll live up to it with the great matches we have on deck for this Sunday. Yeah, one, one thing about this, the Starks Jericho match, I thought it was very, very cool, it, very interesting to see Ricky Starks kind of trick Jericho, if anybody could, into signing it for this. Yes. It was a, some reverse psychology, yeah. and Chris Jericho is one of the smartest men in pro wrestling. Yes, he is. I think oh, Chris boy. Jericho is one of the smartest people I know, and certainly he knows wrestling better than uh, just about anybody else. And for him to get outsmarted by anybody, it's very notable, and it shows that Ricky Starks is not somebody to be messed with, and Ricky Starks not somebody to be taken lightly. And I think we saw it at start the year. Ricky Starks is one of the hot stars in AEW, yes, and uh, we'll see if he can continue that red hot streak. He's going against one of the great wrestlers of all time, and one of the biggest stars in AEW's history, our first ever world champion, and Chris Jericho and. Ricky Starks, I just think that's such a compelling, exciting rematch. And uh, Chris Jericho, as you said, maybe he got outsmarted, but I do think he has a lot he's going to want to try to prove. And I know Ricky Starks is going to have a lot to prove out there. It's going to be a great match, Starks versus Jericho on Sunday. Starks versus Jericho on Sunday, this coming Sunday, from here in San Francisco at the Change Center, and, of course, exclusively on pay-per-view. All right, this past Wednesday, right here at the Cow Palace on Dynamite, Christian Cage came to the ring talking to Renee Paquette, and he made a challenge for Revolution for Jungle Boy Jack Perry. He said, I'm not going to challenge you to a wrestling match. I'm going to challenge you to a fight. <clears throat> and, of course, that is, I, I guess, we, we're not unclear about what it's going to be, but the challenge has been laid down, and hopefully I guess we'll find out more about it tonight on Rampage, right? Yeah, I, I think we're going to learn more about what's going to transpire on Sunday between Jungle Boy and Christian Cage, but I'm very excited uh, for what should be the final chapter, the final fight in this amazing rivalry, and two men who were the best of friends, a great partnership, Christian Cage, a mentor to Jungle Boy, yeah. somebody who he really looked up to, somebody he learned a lot from, and Christian Cage turned his back on his closest friend, on his protege, and we've seen what a despicable person Christian Cage really is. One Just of the worst. One of the worst, most low, uh, low class oh, people oh. in all of pro wrestling, and I'm very excited for this fight on Sunday for Jungle Boy to get his hands on Christian Cage. Yeah, if we've ever had, we talk about homegrown stars. I don't know of a bigger homegrown talent or star that we've had than Jungle Boy. Oh, yeah. He, he's been AEW from the word go and has uh, really, really become quite a star. But the, now it's personal for him. Absolutely. In the first year of AEW, we really saw Jungle Boy, what a meteoric rise it was yeah. from the beginning. And to think that now Jungle Boy, one of the most popular wrestlers in AEW, uh, to think a couple years ago when Jungle Boy and Christian Cage had formed this incredible bond and it was a year and a half ago they were on top of AEW and now here they are at each other's throats and this final fight coming this Sunday on pay-per-view Jungle Boy and Christian Cage going at it one-on-one -on -one to settle the score maybe once and for all at Revolution. Okay, I, I mentioned 
what a big event Revolution has been for us. Mm -hmm. and the first one was right before the pandemic in 2020, Winchester Arena, Chicago. It's where John Moxley won the world title. Talked about that big tag team match. We yes. Had. Then we hit the pandemic, and of course, Sting wrestles his first pay-per-view match, if you'll recall, in that street fight that he had, uh, that tag team street fight at Revolution. And then last year, we're in Orlando, and we see Hangman Adam Page defend the world title against uh, Adam Cole. Remember that one? And we saw Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho open up. We oh. really had some of the most memorable matches in AEW at Revolution. And the first Brian Danielson versus John Moxley match oh, that led oh, wow. to the beginning of the Blackpool Combat Club That's last right. year at Revolution. Yeah. The first Revolution also featured Pac versus Orange Cassidy. Oh my God. In the debut of Orange Cassidy here right. in AEW as right. a single star, his first yeah. ever singles wrestling match on yeah. Revolution at pay per view. We learned about it just days before the pay per view, actually, right. in Kansas City, that it would be Pac versus Orange Cassidy one on one. And people went nuts for that. And uh, ever since Orange Cassidy, one of the most popular stars, and now he has a chance to become the double champion on Sunday. Uh, and a lot of great matches, a lot of great history at the Revolution pay-per-view, but I do believe as we look at this card top to bottom, some of the most anticipated matches we've had in AEW history, including... I believe the biggest main event we've ever had, 60-minute Iron Man match coming your way this Sunday, MJF versus Brian Danielson. This is a match guaranteed to deliver. You are going to get two of the greats going at it for 60 minutes. And in this world, sometimes there are big prize fight pay-per-views and the fights don't go as long as people expect and they don't deliver the way people yeah. believe. This is going to deliver that way. It's going to happen. And you're going to see it this Sunday on pay-per-view at AEW Revolution. Here's how you can join us. Of course, traditional satellite and cable providers. Also, the digital platform for AEW pay-per-views is Bleacher Report. It's also available on many movie theaters around the nation and Dave & Buster's. For our fans on the international side, you can see it on Fight.tv, PPV.com. You can also see it this uh, time on DAZN as well as YouTube. So that's how you can join us on pay-per-view. Of course, if you're coming to the Chase Center, tickets available at AEWTIX.com. Tony, man, it's been a great week so far. We've got Rampage tonight. We've got Revolution Sunday. It's great being with you again. Congratulations on putting together another great card, brother. Thank you, Tony. And it's great being with you here in the Bay Area yeah. for the first time. Uh, I can't wait to bring more AEW to the Bay Area in the future, but to all you fans here in the Bay Area, there are still some tickets available for AEW Revolution. It's going to be a great event, and to get value for your money, it doesn't get much better than this show, especially with that 60-minute Ironman match for the World Championship, MJF versus Brian Danielson. It's going to be a great time at the Chase Center on Sunday. And I'm also very excited to be here in the Cow Palace with you. Yeah. You've called a lot of wrestling here. You've been here for a lot of great wrestling events. Right. There's a lot of great history here in the Cow Palace. And I'm excited for tonight for AEW Rampage here at the Cow Palace and the Countdown to Revolution tonight on TNT immediately after Rampage. I'm just so excited every single time we do one of these podcasts. I just think, how how has Tony done it again? How have we put together just another incredible pay-per-view card and another incredible AEW revolution for the books? This is just going to be one that we talk about for years and years. I'm so excited. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you to both the Tonys mm -hmm. for being here tonight. This is absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this special AEW Revolution edition of AEW Unrestricted. You can listen to this podcast every Thursday. New episodes on all of your favorite audio platforms. You can watch the video on YouTube. Just search AEW Unrestricted. And of course, watch all of our awesome shows. Dark Elevation Monday on YouTube. Dark on Tuesdays on YouTube. Dynamite on TBS, 8 o'clock, 7 central on Wednesdays. And of course, Rampage, Fridays, TNT, 10 o'clock, 9 central. I'm Aubrey Edwards with my best friend, Tony Schiavone, and our wonderful boss, Tony Khan. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted.